Hello there. My name is Dr. John Baugh, and I'm here to help you learn how to make a simple tip calculator for Android using the Kotlin programming language with Android Studio. I'm currently using Bumblebee, which is the newest version of Android Studio as of this recording, uh, but this should still be good information for several versions to come unless they change something completely drastically. Uh, so let's start here. I'm going to create this project right here. All right, there we go. Uh, we've loaded over here. We've got, even though this folder says Java, it holds uh, Kotlin files as well, which we have here, our main activity Kotlin. So even if you're using Java, you could still probably follow along. Uh, with this and a lot of the code has some similarities and method names are similar um, So let's look in here. We've also got resources under layout. You've got activity main right here and uh, This is our XML file. So we've got these two things You'll notice that right here. It's just showing the um, Display here for our uh, pixel for preview this little select design surface button up here uh, sometimes you i think the default is usually design and blueprint like this but if you want a little bit more space and you don't need one at any particular time you can change it to just blueprint or just design or even use one of the colorblind uh, modes if you need it to so i usually just keep it on design you'll notice when you use design if i minimize this over here a little bit that um, we have the attributes over here, this attributes panel, and this is our work area, of course. There's by default going to be if you chose an empty uh, project, so if I went to new project, you can see there's empty activity, and then you hit next to make sure it's got a good location uh, to go and make sure you have Kotlin set and an API. I'm using 26 at the time, but you could probably use something earlier if you needed to or later um, if you're watching this at a later time. I'm sure this percentage will go up for, say, API 26 um, and then give it a good name and then a good package name as well. And also make sure you have a good location also. I'm going to hit cancel since we already have this project uh, created right now. To start off for the, our simple tip calculator, I'm going to delete the text view that was there that said hello world and we're gonna drag three new text views onto here so we'll put one two and three what i'm actually going to do is this disable auto connect to parent um, this first one right here was automatically connected to the parent i don't really want that so i'm going to uncheck that and then delete these constraints um, i'm going to manage them manually uh, but you can always keep that on if you want it to auto connect. Um, you can clear constraints, you can infer constraints based on the current position, but we're going to do it pretty much manually right now. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so we can see better what we're doing. Um, uh, for this first text view, the ID is the programmatic identifier or name that we refer to it in the code as, and we're going to call that TV base label hit refactor and also change the uh, text on this as well so I'm going to go down under the all attributes or you could even search with this little search button here um, but we're going to look for uh, the uh, text which currently says text view I'm going to change that to say base amount and I'm also going to make sure that the um, font size is set so that's going to be called the text size so actually we should have probably stayed down here uh, we've got the text size right here it's currently set to 14 I'm going to set it to 20 make it a little bit bigger and uh, we'll make sure that the layout width and height, which are usually near the top, are both set to wrap content. And then for the second one here, what I'm going to do is uh, set the ID of this one to uh, TV tip label, 
TV is for text view, in case that wasn't apparent. TV tip label, and we're going to set the text size down here uh, to 20 again for this one. And kind of the same thing here, since I'm already in the area, I'll just set the text size to 20 for this third one. And also, I guess I have to edit the content as well for all the other two. Uh, but we'll call this TV total label right there and refactor that. Make sure the one above it has a um, the actual text. If we go down to the T's, we're going to set that one to just say tip. And then this one right here, text view, is I'm going to say total. Now my plans here are to have this um, tip view, that tip, tip view, and this tip view all kind of lined up by their right edges. And we're using a constraint layout, but you'll notice that this is giving an error here. It's telling me I'm missing constraints in constraint layout. So really what I want to do is constrain this top one first. That's the one I'm going to constrain first. So to do that, I'm going to use vertical and horizontal constraints. And that's what you have to do in order to have um, a widget or a view, like this text view, be considered constrained. So I'm going to attach it to its parent at the top and the left side. And now right here it's in the upper left corner. We don't really want that. But over here you have this constraint widget um, under the layout here. And it allows us to set margins, which are a type of constraint. We're going to set 32 density independent pixels from the top. And we're going to set um, maybe 8 or 16 is fine, 16 from the left. Now this one's considered constrained. It's going to complain about other stuff, about hard-coded text and stuff, but we could set a string resource for the text, but for right now we're just focused on the basic layout and functionality and learning how to use constraint layout and learning how to get this thing to function properly. Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take the uh, tip label and set it its top constraint to the bottom of the base amount and I'm going to set this margin here to 32. Okay, so this one will always be constrained to its top but the margin set to 32. And then total, same thing, I'm going to have this one, total, uh, top constraint set to the bottom of tip and we're going to set 32 on the top of that. So now it's still complaining because it says we're missing constraints. And the reason is because even though we have vertical constraints here, uh, we need to set horizontal constraints. What I want to do is line up all three of these so that they're always lined up with one another on their right edges. So I'm highlighting all three of them. And I'm going to go up to this little widget up here that says align. You'll notice it's right next to the pack and the guidelines. It's called Align, and I'm going to click it, and it tells me things like left edges, horizontal centers, right edges. I'm going to have it line up their right edges. Okay, so you see now they are lined up. So that's pretty good for what I want that part of the interface to look like. If you go under Code, you'll notice that you can see the top text view with the base information on it is set so that its start. So these may look confusing, but they all start with Layout Constraint. And then they tell you information about what that constraint is. So here you see that it says this particular widget, this particular text views start, is set to the start of its parent. And its top is set to the top of the parent. That's what we did. And also you'll notice in combination with the layout uh, margin start, which is the beginning okay, or the left side, um, is 16. Now it's called start because that leaves it a little more internationalizable. Um, if we were using a different language that wrote right to left, like Hebrew or Arabic, um, then we would it, the start would be actually at the right. So this is left open for some um, flexibility with the localization and internationalization. But you see the margin start is set to 16, and the layout margin top is set to 32 relative to the parent. The second text view in this code here, this XML, I just went up here to see it. You can go to design and code or even split here. But here, this text view, which is the tip label, 
it has its end set to the end of the base label, the one above it. And the end is its right side, since we're using English. And it says the top to the bottom of the base label. And the same thing for the text view below it with the totals. Its end to end is set to uh, horizontally constrained to the tip label. And its top is set to the bottom of the tip label, which vertically uh, is able to constrain it. And of course, with the margins, the margin top here. Awesome, so that's what we've got so far. Um, so we've aligned them, and now we're gonna add an, it looks like this zoomed out a little bit here. I'm gonna zoom back in. So we're gonna add a uh, an edit text with the number decimal as the type. So I'm gonna go under text, find my uh, thing, it just says number. All of these with this line underscore AB, and if there's a line under it, it means it's an edit text, which means it's basically a uh, text field that you can fill in. The one at the top text view is just like a label. So I'm going to take this number decimal, and that will affect what software keyboard comes up. I'm going to put that there at the top. And this one I'm going to name uh, ET base amount and hit refactor. For this one, I'm gonna make sure the height is still set to wrap content, but that the width, um, yeah, I guess for this one, the width will be wrap content too. I'm getting ahead of myself. So the next one, I want to not be an edit text, but I want it to be a seek bar. Okay, so the seek bars, under the widgets, you've got the discrete and the regular. We'll just use the regular. And I'll drag that seek bar kind of over here to line it up with this edit text, but we'll do it more formally in just a minute. So that right there is the seek bar. And for this, I'm gonna call it SB tip because it represents the tip. And we're going to make sure that it's, I'm just gonna search for it to make it quicker. I'll look for max. I'm gonna set the max to 30 because up to a 30% tip seems reasonable on the calculator. We could make it more like 40 or 50 or even up to 100%, that's fine. But we'll leave it at 30. Um, for this one, I'm going to make the layout height wrap content, but the width, it's a little bit short, so I'm going to make the width a specific number, 200 density independent pixels, so you put 200 DP. And hit enter, and there you go. And now finally, I'm going to put a, uh, for now, put a text view uh, near the bottom, and this one's going to display the total. We don't need input, so a text view is a good uh, widget to use for this. So I'm going to say, TV total and then refactor so it changes all references to it and we can put um, the text I'll just search for it instead of going down um, if we look at just text it currently says text view we could make it totally empty if we want to but I'm gonna set it to zero for right now okay and now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select the corresponding views and align them vertically center. Um, I think we'll set, actually first we're gonna set this one um, right here uh, to be, uh, I'm control clicking these so they're both selected. You can even do it over in the constraint layout component tree. If you have uh, ET base amount and TV base label, I'm going to go to align and I'm gonna tell it to align their vertical centers, okay? And then I'm gonna make the seek bar and the tip, which I've highlighted both of those. It's a little hard to see on here, so that's why I go over here and make sure that they're both in gray. And I'm going to um, align their vertical centers, okay? So that puts them right here. And I'm going to make sure that these two, the total, and, and this one are vertical centers also. Okay. And um, then what I'm going to do is make sure that, so now that they have um, a vertical alignment, I need a horizontal alignment. So I need to, since these are already set, um, I could highlight all three of these on the right and tell them that I want to align their uh, left edges, okay? So that horizontally aligns them. 
Okay, so the error we're seeing down here has to do with um, uh, accessibility. It's not to do with the lineup, and I'm not worried about that right now. So I've got base amount. Uh, we've got this uh, text view at the top. Let's make sure all the names are right. So ET base amount, SB tip, and TV total. Okay, so so far so good. Um, I could run this just to make sure that it looks pretty decent for now. And it looks a little bit off, so we're going to make sure that the constraints are correct. The base amount, the tip, and the total are in the correct place. So I believe we need to make sure that we're um, uh, spacing, uh, even though these are lined up properly, we need to make sure there's some space uh, between the base amount and the edit text, because the other ones are following suit with the edit text. So that's why we run it, even when we don't have any functionality yet. So I'm going to hit um, back on that. And we will minimize the emulator and make sure the app is done. And I'm going to make sure that this actually has a constraint to its uh, text view. And uh, here, let's make sure we got this. So I'm starting at the right here and connecting to that. And then I'm going to put a separation of, say, 32. That'll work. See? So now they're constrained. And let's make sure this works this time. See if it looks any better. And it looks a whole lot better. Good. So we can move this around. We can type into this. So that's good. Everything's looking pretty darn good so far. All right. So now, again, we're going to minimize our little emulator here. Everything looks pretty. We're going to place a button. So under buttons or just common, you can find the button. I'm going to put it right there. Um, and I'm going to name it BTN get total and refactor that and then uh, we're going to change the text on it to get total so text and then just change that to get total and then delete our little search there um, we're going to set opposing constraints so we've seen margins as a type of constraint so far but there's another type of constraint called opposing constraints if you put a constraint on both sides it's going to set up a an opposing constraint and it turns into this like kind of springy looking thing where it's like um, uh, you know looks like it's crinked right so it's like got this um, kind of diamond sh or uh, triangle shape pattern as it goes through a jigsaw pattern now currently the default is 50 50 meaning it's 50 going to be pulled 50 percent this way and 50 percent that way but if you change that value right here with uh, it's called the horizontal bias if I make it go one way or the other it's and no matter the size of the screen, it's going to try to keep it at that particular bias. So if I put it over here to, you know, 18, it's going to be 18% from the left and then 82% uh, from the right. Okay, that's an 18% horizontal bias. But I'm going to keep it on 50. It's very, very sensitive. If you have a problem, you can just go down to the actual horizontal bias. The only thing that um, we're missing, though, is this is horizontally um, uh, has a constraint, but we need to set a vertical constraint. So I'm just going to set it either, you can set it to the um, tip above it or even the tip label, it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to set this to the bottom of this right here. And we're going to set the top margin to, let's say 50. Uh, that should be good. There we go. All right, now uh, we've got the interface set up. And um, I guess, let me think here. One other thing we probably want to do, um, if we um, have a tip, do we want to do that now? Yeah, I think we're going to do that now. Because as you move the slider, we're not able to tell what the percentage of the tip is. Um, so one thing we could do is put a text view. Uh, I'm going to put it right below the button here, and I'm going to give that um, a... Uh, horizontal uh, opposing constraints and then make it relative to its parent and make that a 32 and I'm gonna set the text um, of the text view to just like 0% but I'm also gonna give this a um, particular uh, percentage uh, with the or a particular identifier 
so that we can work with it. We'll just call it maybe TV tip echo, I guess, uh, so that it will tell us what percentage we're dealing with. So we'll refactor that. Um, and we're going to change the actual text, which I guess I'll just search for. And uh, let's see here. Text, there we go. Sorry. And we'll put just 0%. And every time we modify this, as you move the slider, um, we're going to update this. So there's actually two major things we're going to pay attention to because we're, we're focused on event handling right here now is our next step after we got the layout set up. So what we're going to be concerned with now is that there are two events we want to take care of. One of them that the, seems to be the most obvious is if you press this button, I want it to take the data from the base amount and the tip and then uh, place a total value right here. However, there's actually a second um, event that we have occurring, and that's when we move the slider. So while the slider is moving, I want it to update the label. So in that case, the event source is the slider, and the event handler will cause the label to change. So we'll, we'll use the event source. We'll get the data also from the event source and then set this value down here. When you click the button, that's a different event source. The button is the event source of the click event, and that causes us to grab the value from the base amount, multiply it uh, by the um, a tip, and then add it back to itself, and then that's the total. All right. So I'm ready to go if you are. So let's go um, first into Gradle, because the way we're going to handle events here is a little bit different than maybe some of the old videos you might see on YouTube or the old books you might read or some of the techniques that people are using that are older. Um, there's one technique where you can use find view by ID. This is not just a Kotlin thing. This is with Java as well. Um, that's considered an older technique. It has some flaws uh, involved with it where, you know, your program could crash a lot easier. Um, and especially with uh, organizing in the Android lifecycle. The way that's actually recommended now is using something called view binding. And view binding, in order to use it, we actually have to enable it in Gradle. So over here under Gradle scripts, if I go to the one that says module and open that, um, you'll see that in the this Android object right here, I can actually create my own sub object called build features. And then I'm just going to type view binding space true. So this is not Java syntax. It is not Kotlin syntax in this case. Um, we're just using um, the syntax native to Gradle. This is actually groovy is what the syntax type is. So it says Gradle files have changed since the last sync and we're going to tell it to sync now. That's the first thing we're going to do. So it can enable view binding. And it seems to have synced. It says that this Gradle sync finished in two seconds. So I'm going to close that Gradle file and we shouldn't have to worry about it again as far as that's concerned. Now we should be ready to use view binding. I'm going to expand the imports here because I want to be able to see the imports. And the easiest way um, to get this import stuff to actually, or the uh, view binding to work is I'm going to create a private late init var named binding and it's going to be of type and whatever name your activity is that you're in this doesn't have to be the main activity you might have multiple activities it's fine but it's the name of the activity kind of backwards so activity main instead of main activity and then binding and then i hit enter and you'll notice it actually automatically for me imported if it doesn't and it turns red you can say alt enter and it should say import if it doesn't that means that you maybe didn't sync gradle uh, after you added the uh, build feature of view binding is true. But right now we have this right here. It's late init because in um, uh, Kotlin, when you have a field variable, uh, it expects it uh, if it's not a, a nullable value like that or a nullable type. I'm sorry, uh, question mark would be over here. If it's not a nullable type, um, then it expects the variable to have its value set in the constructor. We are not using the constructor for main activity. In fact, we've got this other um, function here named onCreate, which is part of the Android lifecycle. And we know that we're going to use it to set bindings value. So what we're telling 
uh, the Kotlin compiler is, hey, we're going to initialize it later than the constructor. So that's why you have to have late init. Now, what we're going to do is inside of here, I'm going to say binding equals activity main binding dot inflate. And then you're going to pass layout inflator. It's already provided for you. You didn't create that one. But that's how we actually get the binding that will actually grab the names of all of the uh, particular views and widgets that we've worked with so far. We also want to, uh, in order to get this to actually work properly, we have to set content view. Instead of main going directly to the XML, we're going to go through the binding and set the content view that way. So binding.root. And that's it for that. That's all we need that for that to work. And now we're going to actually create the two event listeners. So we're going to have, um, I'm going to put end on create here. And we could, of course, make separate classes and methods and or even say that main activity implements these and then just put the functions down here. But we're going to put them uh, in line here with some uh, special syntax. So we're going to have the button event handler for click. And then we're going to say the uh, seek bar uh, change listener. Okay. So for this, I'm going to say binding dot btn get total. So that's our button, if you recall. That's the name we give it. Set on click listener. Now, this, if I just give it curly braces right here, since it only takes one argument, um, one parameter, we can use this so-called lambda notation, and it knows what we're talking about. We don't have to give it have to give it the full um, function definition that you can see when you uh, pop this up here. Do you see how it says set on click listener? Then you have a view on click listener L. That L could be an object of any kind of on click listener type that you've you've created yourself. Uh, but what we're doing here is we're saying okay, kind of make it on the fly for us and implement the one method called on click in here. Now you don't see on on click itself, but it's going to be implemented in here. It's just shortcut syntax. It's what we call syntactic sugar. It's not necessary. Um, but it is a shortcut. If you don't like the shortcut, you can go to the Android development side or several tutorials show the alternative syntax for this that doesn't use the shortcut. But a lot of Kotlin developers try to use the shortcuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the base amount first. I need it in a numeric floating point value. So I'm going to say binding dot. You'll notice all the views that I created pop up here. ET base amount. But... I need to get the text, but that is what is called an editable. Um, and out of that, I need to get the string, so to string. But it's still not done because I need to get the floating point value. So that seems like a lot of work, but it's fairly simple once you get used to it. Now we have var tip amount. And this one's pretty straightforward because it already has a property that returns the value that's on the seek bar. So binding dot sb tip dot progress. You notice it returns an int. Okay, that's compatible. So that's what we need. Now var total equals the base amount, and then just for clarity's sake, I'm going to put in parentheses tip amount. This isn't mathematically necessary, but tip amount divided by 100.0 because we want to make sure that it gives us a floating point value. Um, otherwise, we might lose data because the tip amount's an integer. So the 100.0 has to be a 100.0. Then we give it base amount, and we should have the total. So binding dot TV total dot text, and on the right side, it's able we're able to set the text to uh, just directly to a string. So I'm taking the total, which is a uh, floating point value, and I'm just going to say dot to string. Okay, and that should take care of that part. Um, it should do the calculations right. Um, if we run it right now and watch it on the emulator before we implement the seek bar behavior, um, you'll notice, I'll, let's say I put 100 right here and then put the tip somewhere and then hit get total. It does, in fact, give us a um, you know tip of some sort, but this is kind of confusing. 
it's not sure what you know what tip are you doing it looks like it's doubling it so there's probably another problem but it's also not telling us percentage when we drag this so that zero percent is never changing so we need the event to tell it to change all right so first though let's look over in the activity main and I'm going to look at some of the uh, values for this to make sure that we have um, yeah, max is set to 30, so that should be good. Um, and what we're going to do over back in main.kotlin is we're going to make the event handler for the seek bar change listener. So binding dot sbtip dot set on seek bar change listener. And this time we're going to put in parentheses. So set on seek bar change listener. And let's see here, an object of type seek bar dot on seek change listener, and then give that um, a set of parentheses here. And I'm gonna it doesn't know what seek bar is, so I'm gonna import that. And this one, the complaint is going to be um, it doesn't know what that is, so we're gonna alt enter. Uh, well, let me see here. On seek bar change listener. Uh, oh, yeah. It looks like I forgot the word bar, so that's not cool. Uh, on seek bar change listener. Uh, there we go. And I'm going to. Uh, it seems like the problem, no constructor. Okay, so that's. Um, uh, let's get this. Okay, actually. Put that and I'm going to say inside the parentheses there I'm going to say uh, override fun on progress changed um, and then uh, oh you know what this actually needs to be a set of curly braces for now and uh, okay, object is not abstract and does not implement abstract member. So it's got some members that it needs to uh, in, uh, implement. So I'm going to say implement members. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to actually select all three of them. I just shift clicked it here and then hit OK. And there we go. It puts this to do thing in here. You probably want to get rid of those or comment them out, at least for the other two. I don't need on start and on start stop tracking but if you leave those there it's going to throw an exception uh, automatically so you don't want that but as the progress is made I want to echo using the so binding dot TV tip echo I want its text to be set to binding dot SB tip dot progress dot two string that should be lowercase two string and then I'm going to concatenate at the end a percent sign because we want to always keep a percent sign there. All right, that looks better. Uh, make sure you've got those commented out, the other two. Um, they have to be, quote, implemented, even if they, the implementations don't do anything. These uh, have to be here because they were declared as abstract. All right, let's uh, run this. So I'm going to run it, go back to our emulator over here, and uh, let's put 100 and as I drag this it's telling me a particular percentage all the way up to 30 um, if I put 10% uh, here um, it's telling me it's 200.1 so I know that the math is off so I probably gotta uh, fix something um, we'll figure that out and oh I see what's happening already so the problem is I did plus base amount right here instead of times base amount that's supposed to be times base amount all right, so I'm going to end that, rerun it, and there you go. So the tip is changing in that little um, text view down there, which I could change the size if I wanted to. I'll put it at 10%, which is not a real particularly good tip, but we'll um, just to figure out the numbers here. So I'm going to hit get total, and it's 110, just what we expect. Um, if it's a 30% tip, it's 130. Um, if it's... Uh, Maybe a uh, let's see, uh, eighty-four dollar bill here, and I say get total, 
it will tell us that's 10920. Awesome. Okay, so there is actually a bug in that if you don't have any content in it, um, it will actually crash if you try if you have nothing in the edit text. Uh, so what I would uh, encourage you to do is try to play with that and fix the bug. It's not really super difficult to fix. There's several ways to do it. You could, by default, if the uh, test, uh, when you click the button, um, if the on, uh, or if the button, when you click it, if the edit text is empty, then you could tell it to use a an empty base uh, amount and not try to grab the base amount. Um, the tip amount is always going to be on a slider and it's always going to have some progress to it. So that, that one's not any danger, but this one right here can cause a problem if it's empty. Cause as soon as you say to float on an empty string, it doesn't know what to do with that. So you've got to do some testing and, uh, check that out and see if you can figure that out. So that's all I have for you right now. I hope that was useful and, uh, you know, leave some, leave some love in the comments and of course, smash that like button, of course. All right. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.